I'm getting them. I'm starting to look like a Scottish Terrier. Yeah, we, are. <laughs> we are. You really are. You got the hair for a Scottish. Yeah. Nice. That's nice. But dude, the um, we went down to Kennet Square, and I, I did. I thought I was fine. I had the weed gummy was rocking, so I was drinking, and I didn't feel drunk at all. So I was, you know, I was, you know, I was trying to brag about the ABV and my sighties. And my cousin fucking laughed in my face. I was like, "These are six point five. He was like, "What the fuck?" Sort of laughing. Really? Yeah. And I was he like, "Thought it was a game." I thought it was a game, dude. Then they caught up to me, man. Actually, he fell asleep. Of course so they jokes up on him, him, dude. He fell yeah. asleep. But the uh, dude, he our squad was so fucked up. I saw your because you my, showed me. I a showed photo you pictures. Hoss. Hoss was absolutely his face smashed. Hoss turned into a pug. <laughs> My other cousin fell asleep, dude. It was we were a hurt squad. But the place we were at, this is the highlight of the night. The place we were at, instead of having hostesses, had hosts. They had hot yeah. young boys. Hot and I, I went at one point, I guess this is how I knew I was drunk. I went to the bar and I was like, yo, you know there's usually like hot chicks doing your job. Why am I looking at like young hot kids? Dude, you know it, what? Here's when I knew you boys were hammered. Oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah. What did he say? What did the I was just like, there's really hot say? chicks here. And I'm like, it's just dudes. He's like, hot young dudes. I'm like, you guys are you guys are fucking hot young dudes. And the guy was just like kind of got taken aback. And I was just oh, like, Oh yeah, he definitely thought you were trying to fuck. I think then he I thought your body his body was driving you crazy. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> you and should then, just walk up to him and be like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem is I thought we were having a laugh, and I'm like, fuck, this is probably weird as hell. I have like gray hair, and I'm like, Bro, you boys are hot as hell. Bro, <laughs> I'm all drunk. I do this, dude. I do that every weekend. I'm like, this will be a funny gag. <laughs> I, I did the Rolling Stones concert. I was going out to people, like, I fucking spent all my money on this, dude. These guys are old as fuck. <laughs> no one told me about this. I was like, this is a fun gag I'm doing with these ladies. <laughs> dude, I, I don't know if I made it weird or if he was laughing. I'm like, damn, this guy definitely thinks that I want to fuck all of the Absolutely. hosts. And then I went back to the table. And we were, I was trying to get people fired up. I think Tom was like, we should start being like, yo, this is the bachelor party. What's up, boys? And start putting the pressure on them. To try to have the boys like, What are you guys doing after this? Yeah, like put a full court press on these boys. It's sick to just bring the boys home to hang out. Just chill. It's nice to have young boys around. Yeah, just like a big brother, little brother thing. But yeah, just yeah. chill. Like, add to the vibe. Slumber party. What are the kids doing? Yeah, what are the kids doing? I knew you guys were fucked up because you texted me. The yeah. Irish are putting on a show. <laughs> yeah. About 10 minutes later, Billy texted me in all caps, go Irish. <laughs> Billy wasn't drunk. Billy was sober? Sober. Billy no, was dude, sober. You guys just must have been at a bar that the Irish were on. They were. It was on nice. a humongous screen nice. right above my head. Nice. I was sitting there like, who the hell is that? Shane's playing? happy. <laughs> dude. Yeah, that was fun though. It was fun. We uh, it was a good old time. We all went outside and a this girl. Is, uh, I texted Billy. I said, "Let's go." Also, destroy Hoss. And he said, "I asked him if he was born in 1962." <laughs> and then he said, "He thinks he can rep 135 to 100 faster than I could." Yeah, that's that's the challenge. Neither of them can rep 135 100. They were they were claiming they're going to put it down. Hoss can't rep 135. 100. He begs. Hoss begs a different. Ah. I said it. If I said bench. He yeah. was saying like 15 minutes or something crazy. I, I don't want to. Oh, so they have him. time to rest. I see. Whoever has time to do it. Even dude, that's crazy though. Yeah. That's 10 sets of a hundred, 10 sets of 10. A 45. That's not bad if you lift. True. If you lift, you could do that. Yeah, you're probably right. I mean, that's what I can. Three fun. sets of. <laughs> Help. <laughs> the trick is you get, you put the 25s on, but from the deadlift thing. So you get the big 25s. And then you so stack everybody those looks up. looks like you're repping. Yeah. You're fucking yeah. combine. Dude. But yeah, that was fun, man. I got, I ended up, thought I wasn't drunk. Towards the end of the night, I was, uh, I was pretty loose lipped, dude. I was, fu I was just. You're letting it go. You're having yeah, fun, dude. I was fucked up. Where's that? Guy? I need that guy in my life. Oh man, it snuck up. I, like I just paid it. for it for two days, dude. I was, I had to go to Sky Zone you the next will day. Do that. I was at Sky you went Zone. To Sky Zone. The next day, yeah. Like the surf, indoor the... trampoline park. Why? Oh, I didn't because we brought Maya. Oh. We had made plans and everything. Dude, oh, you went to a bachelor party and you're like, all right, we're going to Sky Zone. I went. Oh, indoor skydiving? Just two inches from the yeah. ground? Like, <laughs> <laughs> That was so disappointing when I did that. Yeah. Indoor skydiving, you just hover an inch off the ground with VR on. Dude, I'm too top heavy. I would fucking just spin. <laughs> dude, I barely caught air. I barely caught fucking air. I was so pissed. I, the guy said, I, I think I'm just dense, honestly. But, you know. But dude, it was. I had a good time. I got. I got crunked. I was like, I'll be good by the time I drive home. Got back to the house. And I got oh, all you the drove time. home that night. I got. Well, I was. I waited a while because we were in Kennet, yeah. so I stopped. And then I got back to the parents' house. But I was so drunk, not so drunk. I. I when I realized, <laughs> <laughs> when I realized how much alcohol was in my system, that I was probably like right on the edge of .08. I was like, I'm gonna smoke a ton of weed to counteract this hangover. 
Sure. So I, <laughs> I, dude, I like pigged out on an entire cone, like a big old cone. No. Nice. Then I do when I was driving home, it was just like. Oh, before you drove. <laughs> it was. This was like. It was like an hour before. Yeah. So I did that towards the end of the night. We got bussed <laughs> back. I got my cousin drove me back, and uh, I got in the car and I was like, I'm good to go. And dude, I was just like, I got home and dude, Bay came down. It was this. I haven't done this in a while. She came down and she was like what are you doing? And I was like, dude, I was standing in the kitchen. I was standing in the middle of the kitchen with my phone. So it looked bad. Yeah. And I just turned around. I was like, oh, I'm researching how to make ambient music. And she, uh, <laughs> I'd been looking up 432 Hertz like this. Now, you know, you know about 440, right? No, dude, you're being fucking poisoned, bro. What's the that? Nazis? I don't know who it is. The, the head Nazi in charge, maybe Goebbels. <laughs> he was apparently, according to YouTube, uh, you know, I have to check this out. I don't want to spread this info. He you, changed. Don't to, you don't want to tarnish the Goebbels' name. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to spread this information here. He's got enough to worry about. I don't want to yeah. crush him fully. But, he, I mean, dude, this info, you know, this info is a heavy charge these days. So, <laughs> they um, they were saying he changed the standard tuning to 440, which is like it's bad for you. It fucks you up. 432, though. Oh, What are these numbers? They're, the, they're like the frequencies of the music they emit. Oh, okay. So, it's like if you were to put, like, uh, sand on a paper and hit it with 432 hertz, it'll make a cool pattern. 440 will probably just make skull and cross. I don't know what it does. Skull like, and cross moves. It's fucking, it's bad. And they switched it, but you should be listening to music in 432. It's a healing frequency. So okay. I was downstairs <laughs> looking up how okay. to make ambient music. Yes. And I was sitting there like with headphones, holding my phone. I was like heating up. I have like these like gluten-free Hot Pocket type things. So I, heat up, I have two going. You're heating up gluten-free Hot Pockets. I have two in the other. Trying to figure out the I'm, evil frequencies. And I was sitting there just like, she's like, you're <laughs> fucked up. I was like, no, I'm not. No, like, I'm looking up how to make it. I was like, by the way, I'm buying a keyboard. Uh, but I was like, looking up <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> She's like, you're fucked up. I was like, no, I'm not. I'm, I've just... never seen anyone more fucked up in uh, my life, dude. I'm standing. I was even... dude. If you were just standing in the kitchen in the dark, microwaving hot pockets, I'd be like, this guy's blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's blacked out. If you toss it, by the way, honey, I'm buying a keyboard. I'd be like, all right. He's in outer space, dude. It was it was wicked, man. She's like, you. How many drinks you have? I was like, like three three drinks. Four, I don't know. That, I many, started yeah, hit it with the ABV. You hit it with I was the like, Phil, you hit it with the Phil Gillis, uh, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fucking two drinks. What the hell? I know. I know you did. I watched you have six. <laughs> what are you a fucking woman? Shut up. <laughs> I was fully being like. It was the uh, down east holiday. I was like, they had like cinnamon and nutmeg. I was like, it was like it six was point. Nice. It was like six point four. <laughs> I was like, then I, they uh, had local wine. I wanted to try the wine. It was Honey, local. It was local wine. I was like, it was right from around the corner. It was Dude, good. You I go to it. I go with Phil to the bar, his bar. Oh. And it's always nice. It's always a nice time. It's a nice bonding. Me and Phil don't hang out oh, like yeah. that. But then as soon as we get home, my mom's always like, How did you get home? Did you drive? And he's like, uh, I had two beers. And I'm like, nah, Dad, I saw you have six. He's like, God damn it, shut up. You're like a woman. That's what he always hits me with. Yeah, I was turned, bro. I was turned and I stayed up till two in the morning just researching 528. It's also a Hell fantastic yeah. frequency. So technically, I'm a Division One football player that is a decorated veteran and was cast on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I didn't do one of those things. <laughs> but that is my resume, technically. This may be probably the shortest Saturday Night Live tenure in the show's long history. The show firing one of its new cast members before he even appeared on the broadcast. My agent calls and is like, did you say that slur? And I was like, no. His offer to join Saturday Night Live rescinded after days of backlash over racist and homophobic slurs he used during a podcast. And by the time I got to the stand, like TMZ was there. No. <laughs> With his comedy special sitting on 12 million views and having the number one podcast on Patreon, Shane Gillis is one of the biggest stand-up comedians of this time. How would you like to go on a date? with Donald Trump. From joining the army, washing dishes in restaurant, facing a storm of criticism and losing his biggest opportunity of his life to becoming one of the most praised and successful stand-up comedian. This is Shane's full story. The story begins in Trinity High School, west of Harrisburg, where two high school lovers Phil and Joan Gillis met. Years later on December 11th, 1987, they welcomed their third child and first son, Shane Gillis. I'm from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. I grew up in a suburb of like white trash. Irish Catholic family. Shane grew up with two older sisters. You have brothers, sisters? I have two older sisters. Two older sisters. Yeah. It's funny, one time my sister, she's here, she lost a game uh, in basketball her senior year. And I was talking shit. I was like, you guys 
can suck. <laughs> at the dinner table, and my dad was like, all right, square up, finish it. <laughs> he fucking, we cleared out the living room table, and my sister and I boxed. <laughs> Just bare knuckle fucking box. And she fucking rocked me. I was getting killed. I was like, I don't want to hit her back. <laughs> Shane went to the same high school his parents attended, where he did well academically and excelled in football. But compared to every other Division I prospect, yes. Okay, then gotcha, yes, gotcha. I had good grades. Gotcha. Even though he was captain of his high school team, Shane didn't get an offer from his dream college, Notre Dame, where his grandfather and uncle attended. I played tackle in high school. Left or right? I was left tackle in high school. Right. His choice was limited between East Michigan, Temple, and the Army. And he chose to join West Point, but his time in the Army was short-lived. Only hours in his stay at West Point, Shane decides he doesn't belong there. You, you, yeah. went to, you went to Army for how long? Literally three weeks. How do you Before get out? Before it got hard. How do you, you get out? You just cry. <laughs> <laughs> All you have to do is cry. <laughs> like, get this bitch out of here. <laughs> yeah, if you're, you're 6'3", 300 pounds crying, they're like, All right, you're fucking going home. <laughs> so your parents drop you off at like... 5 a.m. They drop you off in regular clothes, and your parents say goodbye to you. And then at the end of the day, there's a parade of all the new cadets in front of all the parents. And now they see you marching in a uniform, head shaved, at the end of the day. So during that parade, I see my mom, like, waving a flag, like one of those mini yeah. flags. And I walk by her, and she was like, yes. And I was like, I'm getting the fuck. <laughs> like, really dude, mouth. <laughs> in one hour. <laughs> and she literally went like this, dude. She goes... <laughs> she dropped her flag. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't belong there at all. Even before his first day at West Point, and finding out he's not dedicated to the military like the other recruits, Shane started regretting his decision to join the Army right after he committed. So after I committed, I was like, this is... I f***ed up. But you know, I was, I was 17 or 18 at the time, so he's, it's new, like, f***ing up like that. You know, I spent most of the time at West Point quitting. Like, it's a long process to try to get back forms. out. <laughs> a lot of forms. <laughs> and just everybody that comes in tries to make you stay. Right. You know, like, it gets easier, it gets easier. And I'm like, I don't, know, I don't know. Wow. I don't know if I like this. And then you also get there, and it turns out all your teammates are real, uh, real f***ing gung-ho about the military. They're all f***ing like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I don't want to. I want nothing to do with the military. I just want to play football. But when he calls his parents to tell them his decision, he was met with an answer that caught him off guard. So when you call your parents like, hey, I'm quitting, they're coached by like drill instructors and recruiters to be like, say no. Say they're literally not allowed to come home. So my parents, when I called them and I was like, I'm coming home, I'm quitting. They were like, you cannot quit. And I was like, you guys are fucking losers. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're a loser. I was so mean, dude. I was so mean. I was like, you guys, are, you're a fucking teacher, mom. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I mean, dude, imagine crying on the phone <laughs> with your There's mom. There's a line of other dudes Bro. crying, waiting to get yeah, on with your the mom. Like, Shut yeah. the f up, Shut mom. mom. You you're a loser. <laughs> and then they finally, the next time I called, they're like, "All right, we, of course you can come home." We were told to say that I, after I quit West Point, or I, I, you know, quit, and they were playing Army Navy was in Philly. Mm -hmm. I, I was at Westchester. Every Chester. one of those games. Yeah. I was at Westchester. My sister was having a snuggy bar crawl, so I'm in a. Ninja Turtles snuggie. <laughs> the team goes to the bar that I'm at after the game. The kids <sighs> that watched me cry and quit were at the bar drinking after their Army Navy game. I was in a fucking Ninja Turtles snuggie. What? And they were like, "Yo, it's Gillis, dude. What are you doing here?" I was the like, fuck are you "Hey, doing? what's up, guys?" <laughs> like, "How are you doing?" I was like, "Pretty good." <laughs> I was doing the combine. Not <laughs> doing great. Things are going <laughs> yeah. well. You definitely didn't tell us that. Damn, That's that hurts. brutal. That one's a tough memory. Because he quitted boot camp early, he had a chance to go and make it to another school's preseason. So a week later, he joined Elon University. But Shane wasn't ready for what's waiting him in Elon either. So I get to Elon, and that. And that sucked. I, like, I wasn't talented enough to, like, play early. Uh -huh. right. So I would have had to have, like, worked very hard for, like, three years to start to play one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was in year one just like, oh, this is never going to happen. In high school, Shane was relatively bigger than other players, so he had a physical advantage. But after joining college, that wasn't what he experienced on the field. Like, you're going up against, gr like, jacked, giant dudes that are physically dominating you for four hours every single day. So that sucks. Just beating. Oh man, dude, I was and I, I was like, and you're going up against I'm big B tackles and, yeah, and all dude, that. Well, shit. even the safeties would like come down, dude. Guys that were like 180 <laughs> pounds would just <laughs> level me, dude. I sucked. I sucked. You go from high school where I was six three, two ninety in high school, 
I was bigger than everybody. Yeah. I could literally just walk towards someone and they'd move. And then you get to college and like those dudes are huge. So the reality is like you go from being the best guy on your team to the worst guy in the conference. The conference. <laughs> I was so yeah. bad, dude. When I my O line coach at, uh, at Elon fucking hated me. I was talking to my coach after a practice or after a meeting, and I was like, I think I'm gonna quit. And he was like, Oh yeah. And I was like, I think I'm like the worst player on the team, right? Yeah. yeah. And he was like, Pretty close. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, All Thanks right, for the honesty. Thank you. I'm out of here. Yeah. yeah. That was my whole identity, my whole life. I was like, I'm a football player. I'm a football player. And then you find out you're not, and it's like, Oh fuck. After quitting football, Shane didn't stay in Elon for long. As soon as I quit football, I just drank and stopped going to class. So I got like <laughs> kicked out of school, back in my parents' house. Ah, like, damn. Gained, gained like 50 pounds. And what came next is the lowest point of Shane's life. He moves back to his parents' house and starts washing dishes in one of his friend's restaurant. So I left Elon, went to Harrisburg Area Community College. So this is all in the span of like a year and a half. My parents think I'm going to be like a senator at West, but like a general. A year and a half later, I'm like failing at community college, sleeping on their couch, washing dishes. Yeah, I ended up getting into Westchester University, just studied history. Shane received his bachelor degree in history and moved to Spain where he taught English for six months. I went there thinking like, all right, I'll be cultured. You know what I mean? I literally, I went to the same bar every day. Oh, dude, yeah. Got shit faced every day in the Sorry. same bar. I didn't see anything. Yeah. I didn't go anywhere. The idea of trying out stand-up comedy came to Shane back in Mechanicsburg while he was washing dishes in his friend's restaurant. He gets introduced to a place where he can do open mics by a co-worker. I always, it's funny because when you're starting, you have no, I had no idea how you could do stand-up. Same. Like, fucking Mechanicsburg, I was like, how, like I would Google sure. it. Oh like, God, yeah, you got I was like, what did Will Ferrell do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Google it. Audition like, for how? SNL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Done. <laughs> and uh, so then one day I was in the depressed phase. I was back home washing dishes at my friend's restaurant. And oh, then wow. they were like, hey, one of the guys, one of the chefs is doing an open mic tonight. And mm. I was like, I Moment didn't know you destiny. could do that. Yeah. So In I, like, Mechanicsburg, yeah, PA? Yeah, the Harrisburg Comedy Zone. Okay. So I went and I watched. There's like, you know, there's like nine people there in a bar. Yeah. And I was watching it and I was like, oh, these guys suck. I could do yeah. this. So then I watched that for like two months and then I finally went on and just fucking bombed. Oh, See, so when, I, when I started comedy, it was only in the summer because I would do it at home. Not really at school mm -hmm. and then uh, I would take like six months off a year off like shit like that one day I got fired from my job in Harrisburg and I was like I'm just gonna move I'm gonna move to Philly and then I just left Harrisburg moved to Philadelphia to do comedy like full time on 2016 Shane won Philly's funniest contest at Helium Comedy Club so I was in Philly for like four years the same year he started Matt and Shane's secret podcast with Matt McCusker welcome to Matt and Shane's secret podcast welcome to the secret podcast top secret stuff going on over here yeah including the launch of a brand new podcast this is the very first episode this is this is big time dude I think we're gonna get a lot of bad reviews after one Probably. Maybe give it a shot again and uh, realize that podcasting is not for us. But for now, this is it. Or this is the best. This is the top five of all time. It could be exactly. It could so, be. So, we'll see. After staying in Philly for four years, Shane moved to New York to push his career further. In 2019, Comedy Central named Shane an Up Next Comedian as he performed at Comedy Central's Clusterfest. The same year Gillis was recognized as one of the new faces of comedy at the Just for Laugh Comedy Festival in Montreal. As a kid, was SNL always a goal? Uh, when, when I was a young kid, yeah, I was like, mm -hmm. Chris Farley's the funniest guy of all time. Right. Mother of mercy, I don't speak Japanese! <laughs> and then Will Ferrell, I thought, was easily the funniest dude. You're a real hooker, and I'm gonna slap you in public. And then, uh, yeah, but once I got into stand-up, like, got into stand-up, I was like, I'll never get SNL. Like, that's not, I knew who I was. I was, and I knew what they were. So I was like, that'll never, I'll never get that. After his impressive performance in Just for Laugh Festival and Comedy Central's recognition, SNL reached out to Shane. They saw me at JFL and right. Clusterfest with Comedy Central. And my agents were like, hey, SNL wants to give you a packet, a writer's packet. I was like, I'm not going to be a writer. I didn't do it. They're like, SNL wants you to audition. I was like, eh, we want you to audition straight to the main stage. So I was like, yeah, definitely. Wow. And I was still like, I'm not going to get it. Like, I remember being in the waiting room with my friend, Reggie Conquest. We were together waiting for this. And I was like, I'm never going to get this. Like, this is, like, I didn't care. You wait in the green rooms, or like the, the uh, can cast members' rooms. Right. So you're just in there waiting. Right. And for like two, three hours, 
while every single person there auditioning goes through. And that, that's what gets in people's that head. That gets in people's that's head. That gets in your head. Because this is the job in it's comedy. It's intentional. That's yeah. why they do it. It's, and I was sitting there thinking, like, there's zero f***ing chance I get this. So, right. like, I literally, I was like, okay, you just whatever. just having fun. Didn't give a f when they When they brought me in, though, that's when it really f***ing hit. Like, yeah. Because they bring you to a separate green room where you sit while the other person before you is on. And they're like, all right, you got five minutes. So then you walk out in front of everybody, and it's this big empty room with two cameras. All right? And they give you the camera guy goes three, two, you say your name and go. Right. And then you just get the off the stage. And then on 9-11, I got the phone call that says, that was Lauren. And it was like, we're going to put you on the cast. And I was like, nice. oh, shit. On and then, the cast. And then September 12th, they released the information that I was going to be on the cast. Yeah, that was the first thing I was ever able to like tell my parents in comedy that they understood. You know, normally they'd be like, oh, I'm featuring this weekend for so-and-so. They'd be like, who cares? This was the first one. I was like, I'm going to be on Saturday Night Live. They were like, wow. So that night I had shows at the stand. So I was going to do shows. And I was like, oh, this is going to be the coolest night ever. All the comedians are going to be like, hey, there he is. You know, so I'm on the train from Queens going into the city. And I got a text from my agent that was like, did you say the word? And I was like, no. Like, I was like, I wouldn't say that. I genuinely, I was like, no, I don't even, why would I say that? And then she was like, here's a video of you saying it. And I was like, holy shit. And then, so you know how it is riding the train, you lose service. Ugh. So I would lose service for like five minutes. And then at the next stop, get a million texts that are like, holy shit, you're, you're fucked. Yeah, so I got like gradually canceled every stop. And by the time I got to the stand, like TMZ was there. No. <laughs> for the next four days, Shane was under criticism and exposure in level he never experienced before in his life. The pressure from the media campaign and Twitter debates on national level was crushing, in Shane's own words. At the time, Shane was getting phone calls from agents, SNL's Lauren Michael and people he know telling him what they thought would save his career. NBC going as far as giving him a written apology to tweet. NBC is saying, here's the statement you need to say. And it's like a written out like, what I said was inexcusable, I've learned from my mistakes, like that like paragraph, you need to tweet this. And I was like, I'm not gonna tweet that. Like that's, you know, that's crazy. But then Lauren was like, I just need you to give me something. So I was like, all right, that's fair, it's reasonable. And uh, so yeah, I just had like five minutes. He was like, I need something in the next 10 minutes. So I just sat there and typed something out. I'm a comedian who pushes boundaries. I sometimes miss. If you go through my 10 years of comedy, most of it's bad. You're going to find a lot of bad misses. I'm happy to apologize to anyone who's actually offended by anything I've said. My intention is never to hurt anyone, but I'm trying to be the best comedian I can be, and sometimes that requires risks. They offered me I could either resign, I could resign, or they could fire me. They offered me that. And I was like, nah, you're gonna have to, you guys are gonna have to fire me. Yeah. This is gonna be on you. On September 16th, SNL released a statement saying Shane Gillis won't join the cast. Despite many offers, Shane chose not to do any interviews after getting fired for a while. As soon as something like this happens, the right, the far right, is quick to be like, yes, join us, fuck yeah. them, mm -hmm. it. It's like, no, I don't want that either. On September 7th, 2021, Shane Gillis Live in Austin was released on YouTube and became very successful with 12 million views at the time of making this video. You, you were already famous? But now you're famous for a good reason? The right reason. True. The right reason? Newly viral sensation Shane Gillis is in the building. Oh, Let's go. The release of his special launched Shane's popularity to a new level. I realize like Fox News is basically black church for old white dudes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like literally everything they say, my dad just sits there like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, preach, Tucker. <laughs> The free special is funnier than any special released on Netflix in recent years. Hidden Figures was good. The, the movie about the black ladies at NASA. Or as my dad likes to call it, Medea Goes to the Moon. <laughs> With his newfound fame from his special and the Gillian Keeves sketch, Shane's career is in a path to making him one of the next generation's greatest comedians. Yeah. I'm good. Everything's fine. Don't worry. I'm tough. Yeah. yeah. I'm a tough How'd you end up dude. living with that guy? He was a friend of my sister's. Did he ever bring up any like decent points that you're like, I'll give you that one? I was like, interesting. I'm swayed. <laughs> hmm. well, a lot of those dudes on the literature, they start very broad in general where you're like, yeah, for sure. And right. they make that one jump and leap mm -hmm. where you're just, or that logic where you're like, 
Oh, wait, hold up, bro. Yeah. Where are you going with that? No, he uh, he was a child, like still. like He had a man's body, but he was still treated yeah. as a child's brain because he was Perfect. victimized so much yeah. oh, you know, God. inside. And then eventually he got strong and got the correct tattoos. And then all of a sudden. Yeah, swaths. I don't. He never. He never. Private uh, property, basically. He never did work, as he said. Really? Yeah. They never didn't put make him, him work? do work. Yeah. Shit. Mm -hmm. Like what? Stab like him committed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heinous murder. He's dead now. So who cares? Oh really? Is he? Oh yeah. Dang. How did he die? Too much. Too many ghosts in his psychic past. Yeah. That would get you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's... He wasn't fun. He had his penis <laughs> uh, tattooed with a dragon on it. Whoa, really? And he would get hard at parties and show people. And the ladies who lived in the punk rock house did not like that. <laughs> they didn't like it. No. It's there was a man with a swa right above. He had it right where his bush should be. He had a, a little swastika. swastika. Yeah, and then he would get his dick out and he had a dragon on it. He'd be like, check it out. He had a high-pitched voice. Yeah, it does fuck up your dating options. Having a swastika Swastika on your, on your pubes? Yeah. yeah. Grow it out. Yeah, grow it out. Go it natural. Show, the bush. True, but then it, it, you might catch a glimmer of it, like yeah, a, part, yeah. like an old, like in a forest takes over a city. Yeah, you see that yeah. little glimmer. You go, what the hell? There were roads here. <laughs> Was there a subway stop here? Yeah, that's a swastika. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, he should have got him removed. I guess you don't have any money. Yeah, he tough. didn't have any money. He couldn't pay rent. Yeah, it's on the couch. Was he still in the Aryan Brotherhood out of jail? Because I heard it's like difficult to kind of. I I don't think that I, he he was in like Supermax in Colorado. I think he was in Florence. And when he got out, do you remember what he did? Uh, he was dumb shit, and then he went to, pr he was in jail, and then he got put in prison, and then he was a child, and he had to commit crimes in prison to survive, so yeah. he was just tacked on shit. You know, he was the true victim. Yeah. Yeah, true. That sucks. Yeah. It's no good. Must have been a fun house, though. Did you have a lot of fun? Oh, yeah. It was 16 of us living in an old, uh, like, you, sanitarium. You're a true artist. I was, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was 16 sold out. of you guys? Yeah, we had one bathroom, 16 people. What? We'd have punk rock shows on every floor. We got shut down by the feds. They came in, did a sting because we would give keg cups out to kids. Damn. Then all these fucking like undercover Denver police officers came in wearing social distortion and Dropkick Murphy shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Every one of Drop them had the same. They were just yeah. fucking. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they just like stood and nodded their heads until they finally they drove probably, police like, cars everybody. over the fences and rounded us all up. Damn. I was the victim of a roundup. Really? Mm hmm. Is that why you joined the Brotherhood? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and then I became an Aryan brother. How did you feel getting rounded up? <laughs> I got an underage. Became I became an like Aryan brother. Yeah, like cattle. Yeah. <laughs> Spent an hour in a drunk tank. I woke up with a swastika tattoo. Dude, I went to jail one time for an unpaid light rail ticket, and I cried the whole way in the car. Yeah. <laughs> After yeah. talking all this shit, I was dude. Like, I did the same thing. Yeah. Did the same thing. Yeah. I got an underage. I the whole time the way. I think I all of us cried you guys. at the hands of law enforcement. Oh yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't let me wear shoes. So I had to go in and put on those like jail socks. Yeah, they took my laces. I remember. Mm -hmm. That's crying. That's crying time. Oh, I was weeping in the back. Of the I was so tough in the house. And as soon as I got in there, I was like, "Please, please!" <laughs> yeah, I have to go to college tomorrow. <laughs> I, I hit him with yeah. the old. This stuff always happens to me. Oh yeah, classic. <laughs> Why does this happen to me? Yeah, is that when you're like, "Fuck you guys!" I'll oh, have dude, you I was badge. talking so much shit. I was like, "I was like, what do you guys? You have nothing better to do?" And they're like. Oh, yeah, we were busy. I was like, what are you guys sucking each other's dicks? And they're like, yeah. fuck you. We'll kick your ass. I was like, fucking do it. Do it. And like, we got five minutes down the road, and I was like, it's not fucking fair. Fuck this. Yeah. You did Matt Damon in The Departed. True. You were yeah. like, yeah, who's going to fucking believe you, cocksucker? And he got in the elevator. Just fucking kill me. Yeah. <laughs> fucking kill me. <laughs> I was begging for death for one night. <laughs> yeah. I was tough, though. Behind bars, I. Turned Once it on. you got into the slam, oh my god, you knew you dude. had to turn it on. I was rattling the cage, spitting like "fuck you guys." Yeah, I was yeah, nasty. Yeah. It was just me. I was literally the only person in the holding cell. You're a nasty jail. I was being. I was. I did push ups. I'm not lying. Oh, I god. was doing push ups so in there. It's humiliating. I was in there fucking hitting push ups. I was hammered, spitting, and the guy was like, "Knock it off." I'm like, "Come on this side and see what the fuck you're in there." It's like, all right, dude. Damn. All Damn. right, dude. It must have felt good though while you were drunk. It was just being so. Like, tight. I am fifty cent. It was so tall, for sure. I know that I'm 50 Cent now. It, dude, it for real felt amazing. Yeah. To be in there and be like, come on this side of the fucking cage. Yeah, dude. get over here, motherfucker. He's like, I go in there all the time. Put people in there. <laughs> yeah, all right, dude. Yeah, I was shit. terrified because when you go to Denver County Jail, you have to sign a document when they check you in that says you won't rape. And if you do rape, you won't take a shower so they can collect <laughs> the evidence out of your holes. And that was like the first thing I had to sign when I was in there. Oh, God. And then they put me in a cell with like an ancient black man. And I just sat on the lower bunk, stayed up all night reading the Bible. That's what's up. Yeah, because I was so scared that I was going to be used and then collected. True. Yeah.
Yeah, I was in the drunk tank. Mine was like really chill. I had like a drunk tank to myself. Really? It was tight. The gang, had like small the collection, cells. The collecting part would be pretty dehumanizing. Oh, yeah. Well, that's well, why they spit in each other's butts now in jail. Yeah. Although it'd be nice. Once it, once they get that out of you, I'd be like, there will be justice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Finally, justice. They're swapping serve. my butt. I'd be like, he's going to go to jail. Justice. Fuck, he's already in there. <laughs> yeah. He's in here. And he's forever. loving every minute of yeah, it. He's yeah. Fucking he's flourishing. Yeah. The lawyer's like, so it looks like you just have AIDS now. Really, <laughs> yeah. yeah so right. There's know. nothing we can really do to And him. also, you kind of tattled, so there's they're going to kill you. They're going to uh, really start raping you a but lot. But at least they can't rape you anymore because you got AIDS. True. Okay, Mr. Brightside. Good point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would, su- that would suck too, getting raped in prison because you're like, you, there'd be a part of it where you're like, it's really like this. I didn't think it would actually, yeah. actually. I thought it was yeah. just like the movies. It's like you're being punked. You literally <laughs> are being punked, I guess. Yeah. 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 In the truest sense of the word. Yeah. That'd be the worst part of it is uh, realizing that it was right. It's real. Like, yeah. This yeah. Is, actually, this isn't. Wouldn't be the violent voice. sodomy. Yeah. And it's so close to being so chill. Yeah. yeah. Just like guys time. The bros. Sports. Just basketball tournaments. We're the only place that does that, too. In the rest of the world, for the most part, they look it's down guys upon time. buggery. Yeah. yeah, they don't. Yeah, they don't do that to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I watched uh, weird. some YouTube videos about like I think it's Filipino jails. Oh yeah, they're just houses. Yeah, just giant. Really? Not like houses like this, but it's like a giant. It, it's hell. It sucks. I, yeah, obviously yeah. it's a Filipino prison, but I read like, a memoir about a Thai guy who went there. Really? Yes. And what he happened? said, "Well, I think he was actually Filipino. Went to Thai prison, and he said that the highlight of his entire time there was the day they rounded up cockroaches and made a paste to eat." Damn. Been there for seven years for like right, smuggling so as long as you think. But, they, Denmark's like that though. Like, I know in Scandinavia yeah. they have prisons yeah. where they have like guitars yeah, a little and IKEA shit. House. And chill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and all the everyone there has like eaten their little brother. Like, there's no petty crime there. Everyone is like cannibalizes. When those mom. Scandinavians go <laughs> yeah, bad, dude. they go real bad. I know. Yeah. They yeah. They just like you can play guitar. I yeah, guess. I ate my family. <laughs> you guys can practice Enter Sandman if you'd like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that shit's fucking terrifying. Uh, there's a movie. There's a kickboxer movie out about a guy in Thai jail. He's like an emerit one of those like Last Samurai type movies. It's like a white guy. He's like he's like a kickboxer gets caught in jail and they have like a kickboxing tournament. And if you win, you get to get out of the tournament or you get to get out of the jail if you win the tournament. But he falls in love with like a lady boy in prison. Whoa, fuck! It's fucking that sounds up. awesome. It's, dude, it sounds film. fuck. I haven't seen it. That. Someone told me about it. it sounds fucking Damn. tight. And he falls deeply in love with a lady boy in prison. That's good though to let out the one guy who can beat up everybody. That's criminal. Yeah, like let him out. I know. Put him. Do that if you go <laughs> like doing some day drinking solo. Will you still pass out, or is that like I got my bros to day sure. drinking solo? Actually, <laughs> you, are you running that? <laughs> I've, I've been there. Like you never been there. Just want to. I go. I tell I mean, myself yesterday. I'm people watching. <laughs> Like Actually, yesterday, kind of. I, yeah. I tell myself I'm going to be creative. I'm going to go watch people. I had to. I had to do this. Come up with ideas. I had to do an interview and a photo shoot for Hustler yesterday, and it Ooh. was. I I don't know. I hate cameras. Yeah. And just having to pose was so fucking embarrassing. You'd be like, lean against the wall and cross your arms. I was like, dude, I'm not. <laughs> the only people that are going to read this article are my fans that are just going to make fun of me for everything in this article. And you just have a cool pose. I was like, why don't you it? hold? Yeah, then they were like, let's get some beers. Why don't we use beers for the... I was like, I'll, I'll have a beer. Yeah. <laughs> we were on a rooftop in Manhattan. I was like, yeah, I'll have a fucking brewski. Yeah. I ended up getting fucking hammered. It was a rooftop just, shoot? It was a rooftop shoot, dude. How many like PAs and people were around? No, it was nothing. It was one nothing? guy. It was, not, it was two guys. That would be awesome. It was me and two guys, and they were taking pictures of me. Oh, that would wow. bug me out. <laughs> that it was gay. That me out. I was like, like a hustler gay shoot? man. And <laughs> like, then we went to a bar. They're like, Let's, There's a dive bar right here. We'll get a shot. Of, we'll get a picture in there. Yeah. And it's packed. Yeah. It was filled with old working men. And I come in with a camera. They're taking oh. pictures of me, and people are like, what the fuck is this for? Uh, There's a zoo. We went to a bar a that moment. gave you free hot dogs. Well, Rudy's. Yes. Oof, with, the pig, with the pig out front? Oh, my. There yeah. is a nice doc about morning drinkers that took place in Rudy's in 2000 of people well, who drink all day. That is a wacky bar. That what was is a it, like wacky one bar, bar and a dog? Like a, I mean, one beer and a dog with your drink or something? Yeah, they kind of give you uh, hot dogs like uh, like in Spain, like tapas. To coat like, the, to coat like, the tummy. Go. Tapas? Because it's yeah. like the last real dive in the Times Square area. Yeah. So it's like proper drunks and you need to coat their little tummies when you give them because they're their stomachs, you yeah. know, they, yeah. they live off booze. The boozermans. Yeah. <laughs> they're boozermans, they're drunkermans, and they got a problem. Yeah, and going then this hustler, the, hustlerman Yeah, coming in with in. the camera, and I was like, oh. <laughs> so fucking embarrassing. <laughs> Damn. So, yeah, then the, the uncomfortability of that photo shoot led to some pretty serious drinking. Yeah. And Just then I, to, yeah. Trying to feel good about it. 
Yeah, so like, it was the only way. That's a real catch-22, Mr. Gillis. Yeah. How you do you know? do it? How do you do it? What time did you start that? The Probably like three. And then just drunk until fucking... Uh, no, I got dinner with Louie, uh-huh. and he doesn't approve of that type of thing. Mm. So I had to pretend I wasn't hammered. <laughs> <laughs> just in front of the goat. <laughs> but, but I kept ordering... I was like, oh, I'll have a cocktail. Why not? It's already like seven <laughs> beers deep. Like, what the fuck's going on, Lou? <laughs> and uh, yeah, I ordered four drinks. He yeah. counted. You said he counted? Yeah. Oh. I was like, I usually don't drink liquor. He's like, well, you just had four of them. I was like, <laughs> sorry. It's nice Did to have one. Do you have one with you? No. He was drinking oh. water and I was sitting there. It's nice yeah. to have a father figure who actually cares how much you drink when you sit, you know? True. Because you don't have, like, a, yeah, yeah, I can yeah. use an older man who actually gives a fuck yeah, if yeah. I'm drinking too much. What's it that? is nice to be like, I can't get fucked up. <laughs> What's that old here? show that's like, it's got Big J in it, it's got Patrice, uh, Greg, it's got like everybody. I, no, it's not Tough Crowd. I know tough, it was like a show show with like acting and shit. I can't remember it. Uh, mm. But anyway, mm. I, I was texting you, but it's like, I was looking at it, it my brother sent it to me, and it's just so many dead comedians in it like Joan Rivers was in it Patrice Greg Giraldo and it just was I was sitting there just like yo we be like a dying. sitcom yeah I think so what kind of sitcom I damn gotta, man I why'd can, you bring us up because I was drinking I can get the <laughs> no but I know I was because you was talking about the Louis thing I'm like yeah. he's seen he's seen oh, yeah, his yeah, friends yeah. go yeah for, like so he yeah, might he's like legit, you gotta be really careful he might legit yeah. just be like I love you chill <laughs> it was nice of him yeah the first one time he took me out and he was like hey so you know things you're go, you're doing well. Things are gonna start. It's just gonna be a party. Yeah, everywhere you go is just a party, and you got to stay on top of that. And I was like, I will. <laughs> <laughs> that was two years ago. I've been drunk for two years. <laughs> like, don't worry, Lou. I got it under control. <laughs> I was like, we're not gonna go out after the show. I'm gonna go out. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. What's the show? What are you talking? I'm trying about? to. I'm gonna try to find a name. Give me, give me, give me one second. And Big J's in it. Yeah. Well, anyway. Yeah. When I got the name, I'll tell you. Don't junk him. I always want to give you squeeze when I see you for a An- while. Anaconda. You never like the squeezes. Squeeze. I like you to the dish most, out the squeeze. You dish out a couple of squeezes. I don't like a good squeeze. When somebody, I'm like a, more like a cat. Yeah. yeah. If somebody touches my arms or my back, I'm okay. If somebody, you get the belly, I'm going to go. Ooh. You like a, do you like shoulders? I'll, th- I'll take a little... Dude, I'm thinking about getting shoulder Botox, dude. Just, just let my shoulders shoulders. No, 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 no. It's the dude. opposite because my shoulders are always up because of my, you know, it's Maestro just always Z-Rock? up. Maestro Z-Rock? Z-Rock something? Like Maestro. Yeah. They're I've like, never even heard of it. Yeah, they're like all in it. I think it only did like one season or something. Hmm. Hold on. He's talking about Botox in his shoulders? Is that a fucking real <laughs> Wait, thing? Wait, don't you just say it? Did I miss that? <laughs> yeah, apparently we're like. You know, because we all got our shoulders up all the time. You know, you, you zoop, zoop, and you lose it, and you just go, huh? And then your yeah. posture is supposed to get better because you know, like we all got bad posture. Yeah. And it's like yeah. I don't want to be an old fucking gremlin, goblin. You know, yeah. Schmeagle. Like I'm this. not actually gonna do it, of course. Like I'm kind of just bullshitting. One time but. I bought one of those things. There's like <laughs> straps, the backpack the straps. <laughs> I wore it for like Tits one. Up. I wore it for like two hours, and my every muscle in my back was as sore as it's ever been. Wait, what do you? It think just. The thing that's like the yeah, cross. it's like a sports bra. Oh, yeah. oh no, I'm thinking of yeah. a different thing. It's very yeah. embarrassing. Oh, br- like, it's embarrassing to have bought it just it, to continue to slouch on a couch and play <laughs> video games. Yeah, I played vi- I played video games for one day just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you go. This is how I was supposed to sit for 33. And now years, I need to sit like this forever. Yeah. Just tits up like like, and then you think about walking like that. Try walking one time with good posture. It's psychotic. It's for gay men. It's it's like. And then you think about the people who do it, and it's, it looks like you're trying to like prove a point, or yeah, like, it's I'm so confident. obvious. Dudes like with you're good being... posture are terrifying. Really terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you see it on like a like ESPN or like a sports show where they, when you see dudes sitting at the desk, like, yeah, you're like, whoa, dude, <laughs> what's this guy's problem? That's what I say. Yeah. I say to myself, like, what's this guy think? What the <laughs> heck? Who this guy think he's better than me? Treating his back. And he's right. like, Notre Dame's going to have a dog shit season. Like, <laughs> I knew this guy was fucking gay. 
And then we're going to be a generation of absolute schmiegel men, dude. We're going to be geezer schmiegies. That's fine. Like the yeah. full on little ladies with the full, yeah, the full junkerman's <laughs> yeah, junkerman stance. Straight down. <laughs> <laughs> with the little bag waddling with the yeah. absolute. How know. do they live? When, when y'all were in high school, is everybody sitting like the cool slouched in the. Is yeah, that for sure. Black people? No, I did. Yeah. Like the slouch, like, yeah. yeah well, my, then, my lower back is fucked now, and I know it's from that. Is that this worse? couch is deadly for that. This one? Yeah, that's couch is just. But it's still kind of supported. Yeah. Like, it, it was like just air and just that. You like, were just sitting cool be, with your like, fly down. <laughs> well, now I got to let it rock. <laughs> now I got to embrace yeah. the beast. Uh, yo, know, Teach. Yo, know, Teach. Get, get this. Is that what you would say? What? Did you go, yo, Teach? I wish. Mr. I wish I was that cool to hit a teach. <laughs> teach. <laughs> Not today, teach when they hit you with a question. So you did you go to a black school? <laughs> uh yeah. I went to I went to Cavalier School for and, and got kicked out in fifth grade. What was black school like? Black. It was black. It was black. <laughs> what were you guys doing in there? Give me <laughs> near that part the first time. <laughs> what were, were you guys black? up to? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wish I had a funny thing to fucking. Nobody put. was fighting. <laughs> Obviously we fought, but that's just yeah. Y'all didn't fight in white school. Y'all fought in white school. Rarely. Really? Rarely. It wasn't like one a week. No. It was definitely Actually, one yeah. Week. But that was it was always like dork spazzes. Yeah, it no. wasn't like two guys that could fight. It was always just like the clearly autistic kid. Yeah, we had a lot. Be like, oh, I've had enough. Yeah, and then we, start crying. Yeah. <laughs> and then just <laughs> Everyone push crying the desk and, out the way. Yeah. <laughs> no, we used to have, we had fights that would be like, Fight in school, get suspended. All right, once everybody's out of school who didn't get suspended, we're meeting and fighting again in front yeah. of the crowd. It was it was a good time. That is, I used nice. to be at all the fights. There was this one cop that you would just, you'd be in the fight. I, I used to fight a lot yeah, when yeah, I was yeah. young, I, but I, my record was terrible. <laughs> I had a Napoleon complex. I only fought one dude who was my height, and it was because we were walking. We were walking at night, and a bunch of us. And my one homie was like. Nate's my guy. He'll fight anybody. He ain't scared of nothing. <laughs> and then the one dude who was my height, and everybody knew he had hands, was like, was like, he won't fight me. And that was all it took. You got to fight him. It, yeah, yeah. We, I had to fight and we fought, but he, I lost. And I was mad as shit because he used to like take boxing. He, before, <laughs> like at the beginning of the fight, he hit me with the Roy Jones. The, 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 like, oh, he did fuck. One of those. And I just stayed back. But the disrespect to even yeah. start this shit. With your hands Especially a street, like the way I would swing, if I tried to hit someone that knew how to move, yeah, I'd miss, and the punch would be be very embarrassing. If somebody did that, I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> why are you making fun of me? Yeah, That's fun, were, then were, what happened after he juked you? He hit you with the Roy Jones. Did he piece you up a little he bit? He got me. It was, I don't remember being gut. that bad. Like, because we were around all our friends. So as soon as it started, like, like I remember us being on, the like, a bench that was nearby and me holding him and him being like, get off me, get off me. And I'm, you know. Like, oh, you were yeah. holding him down? Yeah, but just. That's I a win. But I couldn't. But I See, had that's already got to the ground. Yeah. Now you're talking a white fight. <laughs> Whoever's <laughs> holding the other guy and the other guy's going, get the fuck off me. <laughs> you won. <laughs> I'll take that. That's a yeah, submission, dude. That's a white win. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's absolutely that it was like let him up. That was a classic, like let him up, square up again. I got shocked once. We I was fighting some boy named Kenny. I had him on the ground. <laughs> I was whooping his ass, but he played basketball. And like I knew the second we got back up, like I'm finished yeah, energy yeah, wise. Yeah. And he had him. <laughs> he had it all. <laughs> and I had him. And I was I had him on the ground. I like grabbed his head. I was slamming it. And my same homie who was like Nate will fight anybody was like Nate. Let him up. And I, and I was like, and I had him, and I, he said it like four times, and I was like, and I and I like my ADD yeah. kicked, and I looked away and was like, I'm not letting him up, and then just from under me, boom, and Popped. then pushed off, and then we score up again. I like you said, I swung a <laughs> wild score right up. and score up, <laughs> score up. <laughs> Wait, is that a, that's English. Come on, squared. I like it. No, we score up. You score up. Score up. We squared up. That yeah. don't even. That doesn't even sound good. No, to me. you we score, score up, up again. We score up. So now your energy meter is way down. Yeah, my, Kenny, stamina, score up. Up. my stamina meter's flat. Yeah. 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 Red. Kenny's ready to, to go. <laughs> I hit the R1 triangle. Yeah. <sighs> whiffed it. Did a 360. And then the cops You came. swung and. I swung and missed and did like a full yeah, yeah. spin because I threw everything into it. The cops came and like we're, it was in the alleyway. They started driving up the alley. Everybody ran and I look back and I see the cop and I try to run and I'm just I'm, <laughs> ga I'm gassed. He pulls over. He's like right next to me in the cop car. He's like, stop, stop running. And I stop. 
and I just I just stopped. Have you seen Huberman's, dude? <laughs> have you Have you been listening to Huberman's? <laughs> Next time I go, yeah, I will say that. Dude. I'll go. They'll go. How many drinks do you have a week? I'll go fifty, <laughs> and I'll go. But I have been listening to Jocko and Huberman's, <laughs> and I'll go. Oh, all right. Well, never mind. We don't need to even run this. Well, big guy, you mind if I ask you a couple questions, sir? What podcast have you been listening to? <laughs> have you been waking up at four a.m. and doing jumping jacks? <laughs> Dude, don't bring up the teams right now. That's the another. Teams? That's a soft spot for me right now. Why? Because they're fucking fighting. I will say, um, I think this is really dumb. I mean, really, really dumb. Crenshaw's fighting David Goggins, dude. It's, it oh, makes me embarrassed. Teams are fighting each other. I mean, that community especially. David Goggins. So I'll bring him up because he's not super well liked in the community. He even says he's not super well liked in the community. I, I've never read his book and I've never met a single SEAL who knows him. So I have no opinion. I'll tell you what. The teams do not community. love the the glory hogs. <laughs> dude, it's crazy. And well, Goggins. Crenshaw's claiming like... He's the glory hog. I'm the real man of the of the fucking community. Yeah, he's got that eye, the community. That fucking arg. That eye patch. He's got that arg. Don't, don't tell me about the fucking community. Dude. Dude. <laughs> I'll inter- I can't wait to introduce you to the teams. The community? We're going to meet the teams out in San Diego. I'm dark talking, ops. I, I haven't met the boys I'm dark ops. They know about you, though. Really? You're big in the community. They've heard <laughs> you're dark ops. They know. <laughs> They've got a code name for you. Dude, Crenshaw kind of... Kind of attacked Goggins, dude. <laughs> Again, his messaging, his, his whole demeanor, it doesn't... I can't relate with it at all. It's 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 not very SEAL-like. SEALs don't act that way. <laughs> Crenshaw attacked Goggins, dude. So he's, he's extremely sensitive about this. I didn't know any of that, right? Because I don't know him. And look, uh, nobody in the SEAL teams talks about him. If you listen to David Goggins and his opinion on the SEAL teams, you would think that everybody's talking about him all the time. I've been in the community... For 15 years, I've never heard his name once. You're going to show up to the, in San Diego. And they're oh, gonna go, yes. They're going to go, oh, this is him. This, I is mean, more, this is Morpheus. But as a community, I just want to make sure everyone's good, dude, because this, this whole rip This is Codename Morpheus. He's, they're going to go, Codename Morpheus is here. <laughs> Over. I just hope they're okay, dude. I mean, if I'm in the community, but, you know, I'm, I'm, based, I'm community adjacent, basically. This we point. are essentially community, community adjacent. adjacent. <laughs> I want to thank Matt for putting together this fine casket, American-made. Made it out of fucking wood he found around here in America. One thing Jerry hated the most, and he said it to me before he passed, he said, make sure my casket's not made out of Chinese bullshit. I said, I fucking promise. About this! <laughs> <laughs> They're fighting online is the funniest fucking that thing. That sucks, Just dude. Just big. I want you to look up every fucking book and see they have more than me. They don't. Not one seal. They're talking about operations. All that bullshit. I'm talking about that is helping people out, trying to save people from the dungeon, dude. You can't. This is a dumb. This is why I didn't talk about. This is this is self-explanatory bullshit, man. This is slander. This is defamation of character. You don't fucking prove that. He's screaming and Crenshaw. I can seem to have the the good response though. Think about this. What kind of man? Not a man. Not a seal. Seal's supposed to be above that. What kind of people do that kind of shit? Just run their fucking mouths. Oh, he hit him with the receipts, dude. Did you? Well, he Crenshaw. Hit him with the messages. Well, so we hit him with the messages. Crenshaw's like, you're not showing the messages that I have. That being said, we are good. I was just surprised when I was on my couch talking you up. One of my smoke jumper teammates said, I hate to show you this and then busted out that video clip. I appreciate you being a man about this. Because of that, this shit is over. He didn't want to read that on this podcast for some reason. Maybe because. I mean, obviously he changed his mind, or maybe he was just lying to me. Maybe he's been planning this this debut this whole time. But then, dude, I, I watched this whole saga. I watched both their sides for the most part, and it all seems to stand. I could be wrong. Again, I don't. You know, I know the community has enough problems. I don't want to add. And you, and to you, they're just the housewives of SEAL Team Six. You know what they talk about? I hang out with them all the time. Not you. They don't talk about you, David. They don't say anything about you. Been in this community for 15 years. Never heard your name once. But uh, Crenshaw, apparently, and this looked bad from his angle, he reached out to Goggins at his publisher's request and said, hey, could you write a blurb for my book? Yeah. Goggins don't check the fucking inbox, dude. He didn't know. He don't read that shit. He don't read that motherfucking shit. He's jogging. So, you know, if you ever gone to the mall, there's this store called Build-A-Bear. And all these little kids are in that store 
trying to build the bear, the perfect bear that they want. Take it home, be happy. Yeah, I'm talking about building a fucking bear right now. He's For the next 50. 14 hours, dude. <laughs> He's busy. All right, it is 3 o'clock in the morning. So I've been stretching out now for 174 minutes. And you're probably wondering why I'm stretching out so late. Had to do a 10 mile run. Had to uh, go to the gym. I'm writing my book, which is taking me a long time. Had about 600 emails and different posts. I had to uh, respond to you know, you know, different comments. And you know what, if I went to sleep right now, it would haunt me. Not it, being a bitch. He doesn't check that shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a fat pussy, dude. Tell yourself the truth. If someone calls you fucking fat, they may be bullying you, but you might be fucking fat. He's talking yeah. yelling at himself in the mirror. He's shitting himself, jogging 15 fucking <laughs> hours in a row. I go to the bathroom, and the bathroom's like 20 feet from me. It's a porta potty. I can't get out of the fucking chair. So I'm peeing blood down my leg. Whoa. Pooping up my fucking back. And I got 30 miles to go. <laughs> Which Crenshaw says, that's cool and all, but that's not what the team is That's cool about. as hell. Teams are about getting shot, dude, and being heroes. That's what he said. So, fair point. He had a nice fair point. Goggins ate one, too. But Crenshaw, this all started because Crenshaw asked him for a, state, for a blurb. I don't think Goggins ever got back to him. So then he went on a podcast later, and the guy's like, what's up with Goggins? Like, where does he stand with, you know, the community and all? And Crenshaw is basically like, I mean... Kind of was like nobody really respects that guy in words. That's what he, yeah, I heard that part. Dude, Crenshaw he, was like, he, I don't know one person that knows him. Exactly. No, let alone talks about like kind of like yeah, fucking yeah. guys a jerk. And he was like, I'm just stating the facts. We don't talk about David. We talk about heroes, the guys who get like, so he named some yeah. guy that got shot 27 times. Talk about Mike Day. Mike Day's, every SEAL knows who Mike Day is. Every single SEAL knows who he is. He's lived. And uh, and then the guy eventually killed himself. But then I don't think Goggins knew of this guy. So when he was like, I, I respect heroes. He had shot 27 times. Goggins, Goggins like, 27 times? Sounds like a dead motherfucker to me. Yeah, yeah he's yeah, talking about on, something. Dude. Yeah, see, I don't know who the fuck he's talking about. Yeah. He's talking about some dead guy. <laughs> yeah, I, got I don't care about dead guys. <laughs> and then the guy killed himself. Crenshaw was like, ooh, 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 ooh. That's a oh. hero, dude. Of course you don't know about him. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. The guy was like in battle, got shot twenty eight times, passed out, woke up, shot a bunch of bad dudes, and like got on a helicopter, took off, and then just killed himself after that. So, but yeah, they they were fighting, but then you know, Crenshaw kind of all Crenshaw by the twenty second bullet, you got to be like, all right, come on, dude. yeah, dude, <laughs> come on, or just wake it up and passed out from getting shot twenty. I think it was twenty seven or twenty eight times, woken up, dude, and just going. Ch -ch yeah. Shooting your way, and I got shot twice in the butt. Out Taliban must have been using BB guns out there. True, must true. Been, we, must, we must have airsoft them. <laughs> One pump, baby. Good lord, what losers! But yeah, it was. They had a very unsavory fight on Twitter, and I said, "Guys, come on, man." Yeah, it's not, this is not what it's about. That's why the Army Rangers are the cool ones, dude. Yeah, dude. They they hold it down. I think They're so, like, dude. We don't fucking brag about shit. Yeah, dude. That's a big problem in the community. I know. The seals You're truly hate those dudes. The I don't hits. know which ones they don't like because I figured the, the first they respect dude, Jocko. When I was hanging out with the community the one time in San Diego, I'll let you meet these guys. It's pretty sick. Let me know. I was hanging. They loved Jocko. They, I couldn't well, believe he's, it. He's a Mustang, bro. I thought he would. Jocko's a Mustang. He's a, he's a guy who became officer through his battlefield actions, not through he's Mustang, dude. Yeah. Obviously, we respect him. Yeah. You know, and that's what he said about Goggins. He's like he didn't really. I know dudes for the tour of duty. You know, in a way, I sort saw of his, Goggins show his tours. Yeah, dude. Just because I didn't get shot in the fucking face. I didn't know Mike got shot that many times. I thought that Dan was talking about a fictional character. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> Motherfucker. He's got a fucking chill, dude. <laughs> Go back to being a fat pussy, dude. It's, your life's probably better. God damn. Yeah, there's, they're coming in for Crenshaw, bro. He's got, he's got enemies. Crenshaw bro. seems to get enemies a lot. He's got enemies. I mean, he's got a he's classic bad guy. He's got a, he is a bad guy. No, I'm just Josh. I'm trying to bring some levity to the fucking team, dude, because they need it right now. My mom got knocked out, and I didn't resuscitate her. Jesus. What do you my mean? sister looked at me. My mom fell down the steps. She was shit faced. She's gonna love it. I'm telling this story. This is oh great. Right. But yeah, my my family was out getting fucked up, and then when they came home, I was in the basement, and my mom came down to see me. 
and she had a handful of cookies. Oh, and she dropped. She had Oreos. Dude, stop. And she dropped an Oreo and, and tried up. to recover oh, that. My God. But she dove. She dove down the steps Fuck, head first. Dude. Fucking Pete Rose slid <laughs> and just fucking <laughs> 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 trying to save an Oreo. Yeah. And she got totally knocked out. And I, my oh. sister's behind her. How old are you? I'm sorry. I'm 30. No, at the time, sorry. At the time, this is probably two years. 29. Ago. Oh no, this is actually probably like four or five years ago. Four, this Fuck. is yeah, this is recent. Yeah, God and damn, uh, dude, I would throw up laughing if I saw. Well, it. I heard my sister. I didn't see her fall. My sister was behind her and was like. Mom's dead. She was like, "Oh fuck, mom, mom." She was like, "Shane, come here, mom's dead." Oh, <laughs> I was like, God. I came over and my dad was shit faced oh, and he was up in the kitchen and he was like, he's Where he lost Oreos? his composure right away. He was like, "What's going on down there?" <laughs> oh, he's crying. It was crazy yeah, right away. Trying not to laugh. They were all drunk and my sister was like, "Call call 911, dad, mom's dead." <laughs> oh my and, god. I get to my mom and she's knocked out. How did you not tell snoring. me the story? This is how you should open up every she had, morning. She had black me. in her mouth from the Oreos. Her mouth was oh. all fucking gross. <laughs> <laughs> and like purple from the wine. Oh my god. And my God's sister really my sister was like we gotta her give lips her. are purple. Her teeth are black. She's <laughs> yeah. decaying. Yeah. But no, she was like, We gotta give her mouth to mouth. She's like, give her mouth to mouth. Ew. And even in a moment where I was convinced she was dead, I was like, My mom is dead right now. <laughs> I was still like you fucking <laughs> like in that moment <laughs> my sister was like you gotta give her mouth to mouth and I looked at her I was like fucking I don't you do you, <laughs> you give her mouth to mouth so did she wake up she, she the woke ambulance? up the, the ambulance did show up so now we've got a fucking EMT in our fucking basement and my mom woke up and was mortified she was like so embarrassed but she broke her, her fucking Katie my sister yeah. I stayed the fuck she away did I was like she'll lick. be alright she'll she be alright Oreo lick of the fingers oh answer. she got the Oreos uh <laughs> My mom's hand was like, oh, finger was totally fucked up. And she didn't notice it because obviously she was knocked out. And then she sits up and is like, I think my hand hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, oh, fuck. Like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. A John yeah. always pinky. <laughs> she would cry if she knew I was telling this story. So it's coming. I'm not a Republican now, but it's, it's coming. There's no. And when I'm on the road, I travel every fucking weekend. There's, you know, there's nothing to do during the day. And then at night you do stand up. But during the day, I travel every week. And it's, sometimes I like to visit like historical places throughout the country. So a couple summers ago, don't laugh at that. <laughs> Shut up, dude. It's not lame at all. <laughs> that just laughed at me from the balcony. <laughs> Dork. <laughs> So a couple summers ago, I was in Washington, D.C., and I went and I visited uh, Mount Vernon. I went and I visited George Washington's house. Uh, turns out, it was George Washington's plantation. <laughs> ah, shucks. <laughs> Dude, I get in there. I'm the only one there. It was the first summer during COVID. I'm the only visitor there. It's me, and if, if you've been there before, you know. It's 15 reenactors that don't break character. They stayed. Everyone else was in the 1700s. I was the only guy there. Like, I signed up for the tour, and my tour guide was Martha Washington. It wasn't her. It was some fat bitch. <laughs> I saw right to it. I signed up for the tour, so me and Martha have to hang out together for 15 minutes to see if anybody else signs up for, like, the 3 o'clock tour or whatever. Of course they don't. I gotta make small talk with a woman that won't stop pretending to be from the 1700s. It's fucking insane. What do you say? I was just out there with her, like... Where's George Washington? <laughs> She's like, oh, the general? He won't be joining us today. He's in his chambers. It's just you and I. I was like, what are you? <laughs> you trying to fuck me? <laughs> Never broke. No one broke character. I... Enough times gone by, I've had enough to think about why nobody would break character while I was there. And for real, I'm fairly certain they thought that I was a special needs man. <laughs> Like, they all got together and they were like, look, this is obviously a big day for this guy. <laughs> Nobody break character. Let's make it magic for him. <laughs> like, they watched me park my car when I got there. And when I got out, they were like, oh. <laughs> one of the driving ones. Look at him. It was also during COVID, and the mask did not do me any favors. <laughs> if you can only see my eyes. I got the eyes for it. It was sunny out. I It also, it also didn't help I walked up to my tour guide, like, where's George Washington? He's <laughs> like, oh, you're a big guy. I was like, yeah. 
So me and Martha, me and Martha go in for the tour. Due to COVID restrictions at the time, we were not allowed to speak indoors. All right, so for $36, me and a woman dressed like Martha Washington fucking dead silently walk through for a full hour. You need to be able to talk for this tour to have any value at all. There's nothing to read in there. It's just old chairs and shit. Me and this lady went room to room for an hour, and this was the tour. I was in the corner of every room, just not getting it. We get outside when we were done. She's like, do you have any questions? I was like, yeah, what the fuck was that? What was that? What'd you and me just do? So that was the end of me and Martha. I go off by myself. I start looking around. Like I said, it was the first summer during COVID. All right. So we're in the middle, you know, we're in the middle of tearing down statue season. And I was at a founding father's plantation during all of that. So I wanted to check out the slave quarters. I want to see what all the fuss was. With the... Uh huh? No, whatever. Fuck you guys. What'd you guys do? What'd you guys do that summer? Fucking post black squares on your Instagram? Is that what you did? There's a girl at the cellar that's like obsessed with him. Yeah. So I like texted him. I was hammered. And I was like, this, I wouldn't do this otherwise. I was drunk. I was like, fuck it. I'll text Nate. Yeah, yeah. I was like, dude, will you FaceTime real quick? This girl fucking loves you. And I was like, a minute later, he didn't respond. And I texted him. I was like, I'm so fucking gay for asking. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, I suck so bad. It ruined my night. I was just like, fuck, dude. But then he FaceTimed me. And I was like, oh, shit, hold on. And I held it up. And she was like, yeah. She and he was like, out. yo. <laughs> he, was like, he was like, what's up? What's going on? Like, he was just, also, he got me for the impression. Oh, really? We went out to dinner. That's how I know these. they're watching. Okay. People are watching. Yeah, yeah. I think I might have did his impression on Rogan, and he was like, we're in the middle of dinner. He's like, I don't sound like that. No. And I was just like. How scared were you in that I, 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 yes, I was like, <laughs> agreed. A hundred percent. I have not done it since, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bleep it. We gotta bleep that, bro. We gotta bleep. Yo, I don't sound like that. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, dude, definitely. <laughs> yeah, dude, the the, the, the he the does it. Everybody's like, yo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so nice. I thought that was Trump. Trump it. No, Joe. Can, no, can we Trump, Trump with scientists? Joe, there's a lot of scientists out there. There's these guys that come in here. They talk to you. They don't know what they're saying. <laughs> They talk to you about getting pussy. I get pussy a lot of guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not like they pay me that much. But do you fight? Do What's hilarious is I got, I got like a Chevy Cruze out of it. <laughs> I got trashed globally, and I got a Chevy Cruze. Pre-owned Chevy Cruze. I'm like, this has actually worked out. This is a good deal. The whole thing was worth it. It's a decent ride. <laughs> Spill spilled the beans, but I got a text... That said, yo, it's yay. And Kanye contacted me that day. That day he was that day on his media tour. That night, yes. And he Damn. wanted to work on something. On his media daily storm. And unfortunately, I had to decline. Thanks. I mean, it was crazy. It gave me, like, my face got hot. <laughs> I was in an Uber. I was talking to Matt. And I was like, dude, <laughs> yay just texted me. <laughs> That's crazy. Did you show it's that to the guy yay. next to you? I was in the back of an Uber, just like... <sighs> You're like he wants to talk right now. It's like I'm I'm in an airport. I can't. <laughs> I'm just trying to trying to buy time. I was like, holy fuck, holy fuck. Because I knew whatever he said, I was gonna say yes. I, like, I fucking love Kanye West. <laughs> I love his music. <laughs> You're doing the right. I love his music. You're doing so the right much. thing. You're doing the right thing. Yeah. There's no one better to interview him than Alex Jones. Yeah. So why am I saying the Nazis are cool? I don't like them. They kind of like, yeah. like attack yeah. people. Yeah. I'm not you don't like that. Nazis, so I like Hitler. Yeah, uh, dude, the one that <laughs> cut, like he's like, we're having fun here. We're just fucking around. Everybody's crazy here. All right, we're gonna head to break. And then just Kanye, like, while the camera's panning past the desk, he's like, I like Hitler. <laughs> he must have been like, God damn it! <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> no, he was like, Yeah, we're going mega viral right now. Yeah, I think what do you want me to tweet? Lit. It's lit. It's lit. <laughs> he gets it to do is do stand up 
get hammered and then listen to motivating rap. Oh fuck yeah! On the Uber home, <laughs> looking over the skyline, <laughs> <laughs> just like, dude, I did it. I'm yeah. the best. And then I wake up and I go, what the fuck was I doing last night? <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Oh fuck! <laughs> I'm a fucking loser. It's all gonna be really bad again. <laughs> dude, that happens every once in a while. I'll just get a wave of like, oh no, it's happening again. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone hates me again. That has to be a hot feeling in the face. It's Dude, a wild that's feeling. crazy. Yeah, that has to be some fucking heat for your head. I know I've told this story a thousand times, but getting canceled, I was on a train yeah, yeah, yeah. going to the stand. Yeah, I've heard this. And just getting canceled <laughs> in between stops. Like, because I do, I would lose service. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the next That's stop, hilarious. I'd be like, holy shit. And then the 1, next 1,000 new tweets. Yeah, yeah. And then the next stop, I was like, I don't remember saying that. I didn't say that. <laughs> didn't you say that people were like, people were like looking down at their phone and then like looking yeah, up at yeah. you? <laughs> Several times. <laughs> That's yeah. insane. When I got canceled, I had zero dollars. So I was, you know, taking the train, taking the yeah. mega bus. People would be like, is this you? <laughs> That's fucked. It's me. It's the not mega going bus. well. Yeah. The mega bus from $1. New York to Philly. Yeah. Oh man, the Chinatown bus. Mm -hmm. That's fucking bad, dude. You must have been like, you got to be like top five worst cancels. Yeah. I mean, aside from like, <laughs> fuck. Yeah, outside of like yeah, sexual yeah. predators. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I'm up there. Yeah. Friday night. Okay. Phoenix. I get done. There's a guy out at the bar. And I'm walking by him, and he goes, that was the worst fucking show I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> mm. And I thought, I he was so serious, I, th I thought he was joking. So I was like, oh, thanks for coming out, man. He was like, no, that was a piece of shit show. <laughs> Me and my wife walked out, and we've been out here the whole time. Waiting. Why? And, dude, I have no idea. I couldn't figure out why. It could have been the Navy SEAL stuff, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was. I think it was. He looked Did you like tell a them that you, were, uh, you went to West Point? <laughs> what? What? What would that mean? <laughs> you, you, you <laughs> I, the thing. I was there for three weeks. I was there for three weeks. I was in the ROTC in high no, school. But you, so. but you played for fucking Air Force or Army. Was no, you I quit right away. Oh, I thought you were like, no. In a, I thought you were a jarhead. No. <laughs> no. Thought he was anyway, I get out there. This guy what? hits me with. Yeah. This looks like a guy who served? served. Yeah. This looks like a guy who did. This guy defended our country. That's what I served. So this could have been in the culinary section for sure. But I don't know. I thought you. I thought you did your time. This guy hit me with. That was the worst fucking show I've ever seen. And he looked like. And I. I like. I usually don't get mad, but I was like, you're a fucking pussy. Like, right to his face in front of his wife. And people had to, like, separate us after the show. Wow. Did he do yeah. anything? No, he didn't. Well, either did I. Well, but no, called I called him, him a pussy, pussy, and that was the end of it. But then he has to do something to you to prove he's not a pussy. I know. I was surprised I didn't get punched. He's a pussy. Yeah, it yeah. turns out he's a pussy. Yeah, you, yeah. Proved, you were right. You were he was like right. a big 55-year-old man who would have, and it sucked, too, because it was right in front of the Skin line. Color? White. But he was from Phoenix, so like dark, Tan. leathery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <And> <laughs> yeah, yeah there yeah, was yeah. a the line for the next show was right there watching. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> this guy's like that was the worst piece of shit I've ever seen. And then you fight. And then I get in a fight with him, <laughs> and everyone was like, "Holy shit, dude!" 